So let's summarize our results so far. Aryabhata divided the circumference into 12 equal rasis, then divided each rasis into two parts, found the half chord of the half arc and the chord of the complementary arc, found the arrow of the half chord, which allowed him to find the chord of the half arc, which could then be used to find the half chord of the quarter arc. And put together, this gives us a table of half chords where each unit is 1 24th of the circumference. But it may be a little hard for us to think about this because we're so used to thinking in terms of degrees. So 1 24th of the circumference corresponds to an angle of 15 degrees. And so we can include our degree lengths. So it's important to recognize while these numbers are as exact as we want them to be, the step size is too big for practical use. So we need a way to find even smaller half chords of half angles. Now there's no reason we couldn't continue this process and find the half chord of a half unit of a quarter unit and so on. But for reasons that only become clear when you try to calculate these half chords, Bhaskara chose not to find half chords of fractions of a unit arc. Instead, he made the unit smaller. So if each rasis is divided into four unit arcs, then using the new units, we already know the half chords of two, four, six, eight, and 10 unit arcs. We can then find the half chords of 1, 3, and 5 unit arcs, and the half chords of the complementary arcs, 11, 9, and 7 units. So, for example, if we divide each rasis into 4 unit arcs, we'll find other half chords, and let's start off with the fact that the half chord of 2 of these smaller unit arcs is 890. So we'll start with the half chord of two unit arcs, 890, and the half chord of 10 unit arcs, 3,321. So remember the half chord of the complementary arc is a part of the radius, and the remaining part is going to be the arrow, 117. The arrow and the half chord are two sides of a right triangle whose third side satisfies. And so that length will be. This is the chord of two unit arcs. And so the half chord is half that amount. Or 449. And again, the half chord of one unit arc is one side of a right triangle with hypotenuse equal to the radius, and so the other side satisfies. So it will be. And since the quarter circle has been divided into three rasis at four units apiece, 12 unit arcs, then this amount is a half chord of the complementary arc, 12 minus 1, 11 unit arcs. And we can make a further subdivision. If each rasis is divided into eight unit arcs, then the quarter circle is 24 of these unit arcs. And we'll have calculated all the half chords of all the even numbers, so we can find the half chords of all the odd numbers. When each rasis is divided into eight units, then the full circle is going to be divided into 12 times 8, 96 equal arcs. And so each arc is 1 96th of a circle, which works out to be 3 and 3 quarter degrees. And at this point, Aryabhata stopped, although we could obviously continue. And what we now have is a table of half chords that correspond to the values of radius 3438 sine theta for theta, a multiple of 3 and 3 quarter degrees. And historically, this is the first time that we get what we would properly call a table of sine values. 
It's not quite our modern trigonometric table because we do have this factor of the radius incorporated into these values, but it is closer to our tables of sine values than Ptolemy's table of chords. And later mathematicians follow the Indian example and concentrate on the half chord.